A murder, a gruesome murder, has rocked the Berg. Vignette tries to go on a different path. And Jonah, what is his fate? What is his family up to? And the Spurn Rose, are they really going to enjoy their new neighbor? We have a lot to talk about, so stick around. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. And we're back for episode two of the Carnival Row After Show. Welcome, everyone. I'm Veronica Valencia, and joining me again, he's a producer. He's an editor. He might be our resident fairy. He might be a puck. He might be other some type of mythical creature just because he's very magical. Everyone give it up for Vita. That was an amazing intro. Thank you oh, so, so much. Welcome. I'm happy to be here back with Carnival Row, episode two. Oh, I am so, so excited. Hello, everyone. Hello. We are going to, you know, we're definitely going to get into the murder of Ashling and how Philo is trying to solve her murder, even though everyone's in the way because she is a fae. We're going to be talking about more of the society with the Spurn Rose because we actually get a better introduction to their new neighbor. We're also going to be talking about Vignette and how she is trying to develop a new life in the Berg after a horrible incident at mm -hmm. the house. But before we get into any of that, overall thoughts. Wow, this episode, I, I didn't even think that it could throw me in even more to it, but I love the drama. I live for the drama. I I always liked kind of crime procedurals. I grew up with like NCIS and stuff like that. So when this murder happened, first of all, what? Whoa. The, like, just immediate bowels. It's just. It was completely <laughs> gruesome. Completely <coughs> gruesome. And, oh you know, God. in our last episode, Vita, you would briefly touched upon like Cthulhuism and yeah. the mind flare. And I was like, as soon as I saw this creature briefly in the last episode, I was like, yo, he got tentacles. Maybe this Abs is some Cthulhu something. Yeah. And like, I, I want to like, I hope that it develops more because like, I mean, like HP Lovecraft, I mean, his literature obviously is very pervasive in what this is, but like, I wonder if we're going to continue staring at the dark and if it's going to stare back, because that is what he is known for is the more you delve deeper into it, the crazier it gets. And if there's something crazier than this big creature, this big mind flayer squid creature, then there's going to be some weird stuff happening in the near future. It's, I, this really threw me for a loop, but I'm, I don't want to say I'm happy, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm kind of intrigued that the episode, episode one ended the way it did and episode two started the way it did because the show is being marketed as like, oh, it's Orlando Bloom, it's Carla Delevingne, and they're solving a string of murders in Conover Row. But he caught the guy in the last episode, so I'm yeah. like, where are you going to go with this now? I'm kind of really glad that it was not just Unseelie Jack because I think if it was just Unseelie Jack, that would have been much less interesting than the turn that this took. Oh, I would have thought, I think what a human murderer or human it's like, something, that would have been boring. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, like, we expect that. They're all racist and they're all terrible towards the mm -hmm. fairies. So, like, of course a human's going to murder the fae. But, like, uh, what I also found interesting was that that's not what was necessarily happen happening before. Something sparked this creature to start doing these murders as soon as Unseely Jack died. Because all of the other ones were hammer hits to the head. This was the disemboweling. But it's crazy that even though this murder was incredibly gruesome... Mm -hmm. Philo, who is trying to solve this for, you know, all of the mythical creatures, is still not getting any help. They're like, oh, she's a fae. I'm not going to waste our coroner's time in figuring uh. out what happened to her. <laughs> it's Here's the thing. Like, yeah, she might be a, be a fae, but who's to say that this creature won't go after a human? Absolutely. Are you just going to wait until that happens? Yeah, well, I guess they've only seen fae die by the hands of any murderers around here, so they don't need to worry. That's actually uh, a really good point. We yeah. don't know what kind of murders they have seen previously. Yeah, but man. Getting a little bit more into Philo. So he was kind of scattered this episode, but I want to bring up uh, two points. We get introduced to his friend Darius. Darius? Darius. Darius. Yeah, Darius. Darius. Uh, and this was... <laughs> Uh, for those of you watching at home and for those of you in the ch live chat, everyone, Billy Jean Girl 24, ER's grandpa, thank you again yeah, thank so you guys much for, coming in. for uh, joining us. But for those of you watching and listening to you on iTunes, I have seen uh, a, quite a bit of these episodes already. Vito is watching as is. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely not going to get into anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, his interaction with, the, with his friend Darius this episode was very minimal and kind of leaves... Uh, 
after this episode, a little confusing on who exactly, what exactly their relationship is. I honestly, I left this episode not being confused at all. It was really? so obvious to me that they they fought together. They were war buddies. They were like. And, like, I could immediately feel, like, the knowledge that he was coming to the jail every day. And, like, the conversation, the line that stuck with me the best was, it could have easily been me on the other side of that of, of that cage. And I was like, oh, my God. And then they have the war song. Oh, my God. That just really got my heart going because I was like, it's so obvious these guys have such a past. And I, I can't wait to know about it, but they don't even need to tell me the rest of it. I You're just, just know, intrigued already. Absolutely. I'm going to see more of this guy. And he's going to be important because he looks like a badass. I can already see it. I can mm -hmm. see it in his clothes. I can see it in his face. I can see it in the dynamic that he has with Philo. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that it did leave me slightly confused in that moment until the mm -hmm. very end because, you know, like you were saying, the line, it could have been me behind there. We know yeah. Philo is hiding some dark secrets. And the very end of the episode, you know, going to his storyline, Vignette threatens him like, oh, I can tell everybody. I'm like... What is it? Were you yeah. being treasonous? Like, Yeah, I thought it was something about like their relationship maybe, but I think that's too low stakes for it to be something that's threatened. Super critical, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm interested to find that out, but I like, he was pale as a ghost. He was so just like, as soon as she said that, he was like, all right, go, leave. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh my God, and the knife to the throat. Oh my God, that whole scene was crazy. They have... Ve well, Vignette is very upset and like tortured yeah. by this lingering relationship Seven and what years. he did to her. Yeah, basically how he just left her. And, you know, uh, in that moment, like I said, when I watched that scene initially, I was just like, what could be possibly so bad that you think your life would be over? Yeah. Uh, tracking just to one other point of Philo's story today, he meets, he meets a, a Mima? Yeah, a the, Mima. Yeah, a the Mima, Mima Bay. the priestess. Basically like I a think, high yeah. priestess, yeah. That was awesome. I love the fact that they introduced her with like the magic alongside of it. I feel like we like we got magic in the first one, but in this second one, it just went like really all in. I just like I don't know. I'm really excited for seeing just anything more with how they really delve into the magic system in this mm -hmm. because where a lot of fantasy series that I've seen before falter a little bit I mean like I'm not gonna go into what series Harry Potter but um, you can see like <laughs> these kind of places in the magic system that don't line up and if you kind of can't find where they delve into or like how they do what they do then it just leaves fans being confused i just really hope that they kind of get more into like the fairies magics that they delve into and how how it works because it seems like it's really focused on the afterlife right now especially when we're later introduced to the witch oh um, yeah uh but I, I was just, that was such a cool scene to see her being like so respectful about this. Like we didn't even know that she was a famous singer now, but like she was a close friend with the Mima mm -hmm. and like to see that kind of burial process and then be like, oh, there's a dark presence looming over her. I don't know what this is, but it's bad. Like, yeah. I thought that was great. I thought it was beautiful too because it's a it's a quick glance into the Fae as a culture mm -hmm. as where just kind of how they choose to honor the people who have passed on. I Definitely. thought it was very beautiful how she insisted that, you know, despite Ashling's gruesome murder, she needed to be put to rest and at peace. Absolutely. Which was great. I want to give a shout out to uh, Billie Jean Girl 24 in the chat who was saying Vignette was so pissed when she found out Philo was not dead. And in fact, I like the fact that you brought that up, Billie Jean Girl, because I want to get into Vignette. And that's basically like now that she's had this time to kind of confront Philo, now she's trying to find a different path to live. Yeah. Because basically the path she was living before was she was, I feel like she was kind of and going back to episode one, maybe she was helping those uh, refugees Absolutely. in honor of Philo. Absolutely. And it's so interesting. But he's alive. Yeah. And like she so immediately moves forward. And I'm so glad that she at least has some people to fall back on. That was one thing that I was afraid of is like her character getting isolated. But the fact that she has friends here. And, I love and her and Tourmaline's absolute, friendship. Absolutely. Tourmaline is so good. And I'm so scared of what's going to happen to Tourmaline I had at not the even end of the episode. That. <laughs> because like they, she just leaves Tourmaline behind in the police station and like flies off and we don't see what happens to tourmaline 
I actually want to put a pin in that because I have some questions. I yeah, like the fact absolutely. that you brought that up because yeah. I have questions about tourmaline myself once absolutely. we get to Jonah. No worries. Uh, but yeah, Vignette is trying to find a new way in life and so she yeah. goes to the Black Ravens who, <sighs> yeah. it's also a bad they're place so for cool. her because, oh, I think that they're crazy. In the sense that Vignette's whole thing is, you know, she wants to work at the brothel because she would be like, I'd be making my own money. I'd be working with my own absolutely. kind. I would it feel, makes sense. I would feel uh, at, in a place, I would feel like I belong. But she goes to the Black Ravens, and they might be Fey, but yeah. Dahlia is killing her own. Yeah, but honestly, I don't think I blamed her. I saw she. I mean, her explanation was if there's if there's a rat in the group, I can't afford it. We're gonna die. But do you? Th but do you think that even if Ren was telling the truth with that, which at this point seems highly plausible, she was telling the truth. Yeah. Do you think Dahlia would even believe her? I don't know. Like, what would it take for to but, get Dahlia to believe anyone if she feels like she's been betrayed? It'll be interesting to see how Dahlia treats Vignette, but in I, I think in the introduction of her character and, like, kind of with how she is, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not necessarily, obviously, I'm upset because she murdered somebody, especially her own kind, but, like, at the same time, she's got a show to run, and, like, she is really trying to make sure that nobody gets caught in here, and she's really making sure that nobody else has to die, so, like, they don't have room for snitches, you know? I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to, um, I don't really want to treat this like it's not a murder of her own kind, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like, I want to make sure that that group continues to be able to stay alive. Yeah. I'm invested in them. I'm invested in their ability to succeed and eventually, hopefully, Vignette's success in that group. Mm -hmm. But it'll be interesting. Like, I mean, it's obvious that she loved Vignette right off the bat. She was like, yeah, you did a lot of work for us in the past seven years without even knowing it, just bringing over yeah. refugees. That's honest work. And, I can yeah. I can understand her mindset and that she wants to keep the Fae alive because they are treated so poorly because they will be killed and no one will care. I I personally just think she's a little uh, um, harsh about it, but I totally I do agree with you. I do see where she's coming from. I think her approach. Uh, I just think I'm not on the same page about yeah. her approach yeah, because yeah, you know she yeah. asks I get it. Vignette to steal the flag and you know she's able to steal it, but like you're saying, she leaves Tourmaline behind. And speaking of Tourmaline, mm -hmm. she. Kind of, she's not really caught up in the whole Jonah being kidnapped scandal, but given how against the, the how society is so mm -hmm. against the Fae, like I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't uh, suspect her. Yeah, I'm also surprised that they didn't suspect her, but to be fair, I think they were too caught up in the fact that that one puck did a really bad job at taking care of the yeah. son. Yeah. But I that's I just want to say that scene made me laugh so hard and I don't think But he's it, trying to protect himself like I'm sorry, I no, meant to help you. Oh. When he was getting out of the bed, and he was like I need to piss and then he gets oh. up, he goes First of all, why does he go to the window where it's raining completely butt naked and then he just immediately it's probably like an one entitled two, attitude. Boom, boom out just out. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. I don't know. I just like I was almost half expecting like what are you going to do? Piss in the street? But uh yeah, I I don't know why they haven't suspected her as like any witness, but to be fair, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. That's true. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe they didn't suspect her because they didn't want that to be a scandal. Yeah. Because that was something that Longer Bang could use that's as right. ammo. That's right. Yeah, Ooh. that's that's definitely right because at the end of the day, this is kind of a political drama even still. But guess what? what? It's not Longer Bane. No, it's not. Were you surprised when you found out that the mom, Piety, yes. had was behind this? I was absolutely surprised. She did such a good job of covering up everything that she did. I did not expect, I mean, like when she was like, I always hated that bear. And she was talking to the, I was like, you killed the bear. The bear you was stole sad. stole the sun. What are you doing? But I, it's, yeah. I think she, personally, I think she thinks her husband is incompetent in being able right. to run the basically this bipartisanship yeah. and I think he basically needed to go unopposed yeah. so that he can continue on. I think she hates, I think she likes the pact. I think she thinks the pact oh. were doing a good job because like judging by like the bipartisanship in it, I mean the other side that isn't their family side is certainly like more towards the pact's kind of Beliefs. They're mm -hmm. not. They're not straight up killing Faye in the streets, but they're definitely like they shouldn't be here, and we don't need them here. Um, so I wouldn't go to, as far to say as they are the pact, but I wouldn't be surprised if like her story gets more in depth to those beliefs of hers, because you don't just kidnap your own son and force your husband to give up his pet 
over nothing. Like, yeah. like she has something personal here. This is something that is like vendetta esque for her. That it's like, I need to run this show because it's not going the way that I want it to, and it's scary. That is scary. It's scary, to me. but it's, but it, I'm pretty excited. I'll be honest. Piety is interesting. I'm so intrigued to see kind of how she's running this puppet show. Uh, but you know, you were Vito. You, know, you were also kind of saying like, oh, you know, like we were saying the politics. They aren't killing the phase in the streets, yeah. but they don't want them around. And clearly the Spurn Roses don't want Mr. Agreus around. Absolutely. They don't Which, want him to be the neighbor. Oh my God. He's so cool though. He's so He's cool. He's so cool. And you want to know what? He, I want to get into Imogen more specifically in this yes, little segment. Yes, definitely, definitely. Because she is part of high society. Yeah. She, I feel like she has a love-hate relationship in the sense where she loves high society, high society hates her. Absolutely. No one accepts her. Absolutely. She has no suitors. She's a bird in a cage. When she was out in the rain, the only person to lend her an umbrella was Mr. Agreus. Man, and how that was so, I didn't see that coming at all. I didn't see him coming forward with that and, and like trapping her in this interaction that she was dreading for this whole time. And then he just straight up, what? The whole thing with the spray bottle, with that, like, I'm trying to decipher, was that a potion or is that just a, a fragrance? I assumed it was a fragrance that he is saying men can't resist and it's probably yeah. because she can't get any Absolutely. male suitors. Yeah. I just, like, I'm, and then, like, when he's like, oh, yeah, that's made out of our kind's piss. Like, I was like, oh, whoa, whoa! <laughs> like, that's crazy that she didn't know that. It's crazy that they were kind of getting at her with that. Like, I, I could imagine that being kind of like a, sub, like a trying to get at the higher class mm -hmm. from the pucks that are on the streets giving this to her. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The thing that I found so funny about one of her interactions was when she was trying to say to Arissa, uh, he's trying to get money. He's trying trying to use his money to buy acceptance. And I'm like, uh, isn't that what you're doing? And not isn't only, that what all high society is doing? And she's complaining to a puck about a puck, which that is so, so messed awkward. up. That was so messed up. It was terrible to watch that because you could, you could see that her maid was like, definitely didn't want to say anything and from her interaction with mm -hmm. um, Vignette earlier being like, hey, I don't want you to mess this up for me. I have been here for so long with a roof over my head and then you just get a glimpse into the past like however long she's been here just mm -hmm. of abuse. But yeah, I, I found Emojin as a character to be endearingly terrible. I want to see what ends up happening to her. I actually thought Vignette was going to kill her in this episode and and the brother. I wouldn't have been surprised. I wouldn't have been surprised either because the brother is complete scum. Oh my God. The, oh. Here's uh, the one- Ezra is so bad. Yeah, uh, the the only thing I really want to say about this, we know, like it was, it's it's hard to watch Absolutely. scenes like that. Yeah. And I will say I am, happy that it got cut off. Absolutely. I'm glad that they didn't make us watch that and I'm glad that it didn't actually and I mean obviously it happened it was an event. It didn't progress. It didn't progress and I, I'm I'm not only happy for Vignette's character but I'm kind of happy as an audience member because that I I didn't need to see that. I don't think any of us wanted to see that or needed to see that in any regard. And I'm almost like, I'm glad that that was the thing that separated them. I'm glad that it wasn't, she wasn't still in the house with that after happening. Mm -hmm. I was really, really happy to see her just be able to go to her friends and abandon this completely. And then Philo later is able to just totally clear all of her charges that are mm -hmm. due which i th i didn't expect that at first like when it happened when the transfer happened of the deed uh i thought that like something weird was going to happen with philo's character like now owning vignette because i was like oh no he no. could totally just keep that but he took the moral high ground and didn't yeah i think they have an interesting relationship in that we don't know what mm. their entire previous relationship was but it seems like even now seven years later there's still at least on philo's end might be a deep respect for vignette Absolutely. Which I appreciate. And yeah. I'm, and like you're saying, I'm happy he took the moral high ground. Uh, and I'm happy Vignette was able to just get out of that situation and really not care, like, oh, but I need a roof to sleep, sleep a uh, place to sleep. I need yeah. money. I like how she took, like, just got out of a very toxic situation. Absolutely. And now she's flying off on her own. She's got that flag. She left her friend behind, but she's got the flag. So I guess we'll see what happens with Tormeline and we'll end up seeing what happens with Vignette with the Blackhawks. Blackhawks? Black Ravens. Black Ravens. Thank you. Yeah. yeah that, I don't know. I'm, I'm very interested to see where that all goes. Um, I, 
I'm nervous, but mm -hmm. excited. <laughs> but excited. You know what I'm excited about? What are you excited about? Apparently, you have some very interesting news for us. I do have some very interesting After news. Buzz TV news. So, we got reports that Rotten Tomatoes is very bipartisan on the decisions on the uh, ratings for this show. Right now, there is currently a 54% average uh, tomato meter for the critics' reception. Boo. But audiences are rating it at an 88%. So, I find it really interesting to see that critics... I, I looked at article after article talking about this series saying it was a dud. Orlando is, is part of this, like... Bad I don't understand. Series. Neither do I. Because, like, I I wonder what it is about critics with fantasy, because we see this a lot. I mean, like, Lord of the Rings kind of changed the game. But to see an original fantasy piece like this kind of just get trashed just because it's kind of like a new take and not based off of any original content, I think is really interesting. But I'm glad that audiences are really into this, because... I think it's yeah. very difficult from your pseudotypical kind of fantasy. It's not Absolutely. a Lord of the Rings. It's, it's not, not a Game of Thrones. It's not a Game of Thrones. It's very different. It's not even like, oh, let's throw some werewolves in New York City in 2019, you yeah. know? It's very different. It's very original. And I'm happy, like you were saying, I'm happy to see that audiences have grown to appreciate and enjoy it. Absolutely. So now I'd like to take you on a walk through Mythical Row. What are we talking about today? So today we're going to be talking about Pucks, which are the goat people that are in this series. So Pucks have an interesting um, history, and I'll just start with the true name of Pucks seen in history is Robin Goodfellow. For a lot of other reasons, they're also known as Hobgoblins, um, which is like the typical name that are used for them. They're seen in a lot of different lore but the etymology is really uncertain, but we think it's uh, like Old English, Norse, Swedish, Celtic, Icelandic. Uh, they're all kind of similar. They started appearing in like the 15 to 1600s. Um, Puck is a big character. Um, actually, it's it's specifically the name uh, but, 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 but Robin Goodfellow is used in Midsummer uh, as a character. It's the character that it's appears as a goat. Yeah, it's and it's the he's also a fairy though. Yeah, right? he's a fae. So that's the other thing. Um, the the puck are actually seen as fae people. They are actually like origins of fairies. They're supposed to be like seen as like kind of demonic in some sense, but also fairy like. And last thing, uh, they are known to do work for you if you give them small gifts. They have or if you have a knack. Uh, they are inherently lonely creatures and look to uh, find friends, which I find interesting towards our characters who are pucks in the series. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, they're seen as kobolds, kind of. They're jesters of the fairy court. They're just very interesting creatures. So it's interesting to see them on the row along with everybody else. I'm interested kobolds. to see. That yeah. was another character brought up this kobolds episode. Kobolds are separate, too. So it's interesting. I think a lot of the fairy lore gets a little like mixed together in this. Um, or just in general yeah. in history. In this, they separate them specifically. But yeah, that's it for the mythical row. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed that. I'm glad you did. And I'm and I have one last question. Yeah. Puck is the actual name. Yeah. Of, well, so, it's not derogatory. Is basically what I'm asking. No, Puck is actually so like the very formal name is Robin Goodfellow, but Puck is the name of these creatures. Great. Yeah. Because yeah, the high image in specifically was always saying, "Oh, that Puck. Oh, that Puck." So I'm like, yeah. "Oh, is that is that a bad word?" Uh, yeah. G glad we figured that out. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I also wanted to say one more thing about fairies. The, uh, the unsully and the sully fairies are actually two separate kinds. The unsully fairies are... are they're nice and kind, and then yeah, like the unsealies. No, the un unsealies. Yeah, the Un unsealies are bad, and the sealies are good. So that's an interesting, like, yeah. unsealy jack, interesting thing. I see but what you're saying. That's all I'll say about I that. got you. <laughs> all right, everyone. Uh, well, that wraps up our after show on episode two of Carnival. Thank you so much for joining us. Quick shout out to Renji90998. Rita, Ivan, ER's grandpa, Billy Jean Girl, all of you in the chat, thank you so much for joining in. Vito, where can the fans find you on social media? You can all find me at vscutty, V S C U T T I, on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me, Veronica Valencia, on Twitter and Instagram at it's me, Veronica underscore V. Again, thank you so much thank for tuning guys. in, and we'll see you next time. Woo! Bye. Our Come founder, on. Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.